Okay, we're going to go live. Hey guys, welcome to the event. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing and, and by opposing end them, to die, to sleep no more, and by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. These are, of course, the famous words from the character Hamlet in his famous passage from Shakespeare's masterpiece, in case you didn't know that. Hamlet contemplates on how to pick the better of two seemingly very bad options, life or death. Is it worth to keep living and suffer, as he says, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or is death by suicide a better option? If we simply change the words a little bit in that passage, we can see that this pertains to the stock markets a lot. To be active or not to be active, that is the question. And in the markets, we must choose, we must decide. Do we choose to be aligned with the general trends of the markets and passively participate? Or do we opt to become active, knowing full well that the statistics do not favor us? On that note, I am Raghu Kumar, the founder of Rain Platforms. Today, we are hosting two amazing panel event discussions. The first is on the topic of making the case for active investing and trading. The second, moderated by my co-founder Harsh Agarwal, will be on the topic, the proliferation of open API technologies and how this trend is affecting the retail landscape. Here is the agenda for the day. I'm going to share, let me just make me the host really quick, um, but I'm gonna share the agenda for the day. Essentially, um, the agenda is going to be, uh, this is the introduction afterwards. Um, there's going to be the first panel event discussion. After that, um, we are going to introduce Trading Rooms, India's first automated social investing product, followed by the second panel event discussion how the proliferation of open API technologies has changed the retail landscape. And we've got some really nice prize giveaways for you guys. Make sure to stay till the end of the event to be eligible for the prize giveaways. So that's the agenda. What I'm gonna do really quickly is just set the tone, right? And try to define passive investing, active investing and active trading because there's a lot of terminologies to kind of think about. Passive investing mimics the returns of an index, while active investing tries to, tries to outperform an index through long-term investments. Therefore, you have active fund managers who are trying to beat the general index, and you have index funds and ETFs, which track the general markets, which obviously make up passive investing. And then you have trading. A very well-known statistic in the trading world is that, unfortunately, 90% of intraday traders lose money. Yet we all know intraday traders in our lives who make a killing in the markets. So how do we reconcile these statements? Well, there's an argument to be made for all three camps. Just like Hamlet, sometimes it feels like we're forced to pick the lesser of two very bad options when it comes to active and passive, active versus passive. But maybe there's a more optimistic way of, think, of thinking about the whole situation. Ultimately, all three options are generally preferred to having your money sit in a bank account generate very low rates of interest, right? And so therefore it's about picking the best out of three very lucrative options. Let's be optimists, not pessimists like Hamlet. All right, enough of me rambling, let's get on with the first topic. Before that, we are going to push out the first poll question of the day. We are going to be throwing out a new poll question every 15, 20 minutes. And we encourage you to participate actively, right? Let's make this an active discussion. And also we will have a Q&A session at the end. So be sure to ask us a lot of questions so that our team can get back to, um, can get back to uh, your questions real time. All right, so now let's go ahead and begin the first panel event discussion. 
It is going to be on the topic, making the case for active investing and trading. I am joined by four individuals. First, let me, let me introduce Pratik. Uh, Pratik, you can go ahead and turn your video on. Um, so Pratik is a seasoned trader. I've known him for a long time. In fact, I just interviewed him for our podcast a few weeks ago. He started his trading career after dropping out of school after eighth grade and has never stopped trading since. He has a very strong affinity for algorithmic trading. LearnApp, the company that he started, is an online video education platform which brings the best minds in the fields of trading, investing, and business management to teach from a relevant skills-driven curriculum. So welcome, Pratik. Our second panelist is Tina Gadodia. Ask for Tina's LinkedIn. Tina considers herself to be a hardcore derivatives options trader. At QuantsApp, her journey has gone from being an options research analyst to heading the development team of a leading options analytical platform. QuantsApp is a new age quantitative and advanced algorithm platform focused on options trading. Welcome, Tina. Our third panelist is Sarab Sasodia. Sarab completed his engineering from one of the most reputed colleges in Mumbai and worked his way to become a successful quant trader. He eventually started Quantify Capital, a quantitative research and trading firm with a strong focus on building quantitative investment and trading models to generate stable and consistent alpha. Welcome, Sarab. And finally, we have Manu Bhatia, uh, a very well-known proprietary retail trader in India. Uh, Manu did his BTEC from IT Kanpur, joined Flipkart as an analyst and exited as an associate director after six years. He's been an active participant in the markets for more than 12 years. He is a systems trader and believes in a process-oriented method of trading, which involves backtesting, deploying, stabilizing, and scaling. He has recorded a staggering 100x trading return in the last four years. That figure I keep seeing everywhere is just mind-boggling. Manu, welcome. So... You know, we're, we're, you know, we're going to try to keep this as lively as possible and, uh, you know, let's get on with it. So Pratik, the first question is to you, man. Um, at LearnApp, you have interacted with a lot of different personalities, right? Ranging from traders to entrepreneurs to fund managers. And I feel like, and I feel like if I had to guess, you would be the most like unbiased, you know, when it comes to passive versus active. What is one really, what is one really good argument that you could make for someone to opt into passive investing products? Okay, before I answer that question, Raghu, I thought I'll just set the tone a little bit from my side. So I'd like to thank you for inviting me and all of us, and especially with like Saurav here and Manu and Tina, it's just fantastic. So thanks everyone for coming here. This is great. I know them all personally and, and you as well. Uh, you know, I remember the time, Raghu, when we started talking about algo trading and stuff like many years ago, and people just didn't know what it was. And now we're having these discussions. It's great. So thanks for that. And congratulations on what you're doing at Rain Platforms. Um, with that, can you can you say the last two lines again so I'll get ahead and answer your question? <laughs> sure. Yeah. So so what is one really good argument for why someone should opt into a passive investing product? Oh, that, that's interesting, right? So I think, uh, like you said, passive investing is basically you investing in the index, so you don't have to cherry pick a bunch of stocks and then worry whether you were right or wrong. Instead, you are or you become the market by investing in the top 50 or the top 30 stocks. And since you are the market, whether the market falls or not, you're not really worried about beating it. What you're really aiming for is the average CAGR that equity as an asset is giving you, right? Um, and so to make a case for that, one good thing about that is if a person really doesn't want to spend time learning about how stocks work, optimizing his returns, et cetera, the best way to begin is to actually invest in an index fund. So you invest in Nifty 50 or something, and then just forget about it and go do your day job, build your company, do whatever, uh, which is why you'll see a lot of these mutual fund companies saying, hey, if you don't care about how markets work and it's so technical, simply buy this product of ours, which will invest in equity, and you don't have to worry about uh, the nitty gritties of stocks. But I think, Raghu, and anyone who's watching this will not fall into that category. It seems like they'll want to be a little more invested into where and how can I optimize to, to actually beat the market. So do you want to talk about that? Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, um, let's let's I mean, that's, you know, that's the general argument, right? Passive versus active. Um, let's turn the table to Sarab, right? So, Sarab, what are your thoughts on what Pratik said? I mean, is, is that a good way to kind of think about the whole situation if 
someone wants to get in and just be generally invested in the markets? Sorry, you're on, you're no, on we mute, can't sorry. hear you, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So if you see the Indian landscape is changing, if you see last year only we opened around 10 million trading accounts. And if you see people are more eager to learn now, if you see the way Learn App has grown, people are actively participating. They want to know how things work. Earlier it was okay, I'll invest in this mutual fund, I'll invest in this product and they don't have to do anything. But if you see the way businesses are also changing, businesses which were relevant five years ago and now if you see, with the new technology that are coming in. Yesterday, I was talking to a fund manager called Neil Bahal, and his PMS is the top performing PMS since last two years, Need in Capital. And he told me one thing, that if you are not focused on tech, if you want to just buy a Pedilite in Asian paint, no doubt, you'll make money, you'll make 10, 12% CAGR. But if you want to make good CAGR, look at new age businesses. So he was talking about Nike. He was like, Yes, market feels that it's overvalued, but they don't know the J curve potential, the way they are leveraging technology, the way new age businesses are coming in, like Zomato got listed, Paytm got listed. So my thing, uh, what I believe is you have to like buy and hold, the times are gone. You have to actively look at opportunities with changing times, the way tech is being used in a lot of businesses. So your focus should be on businesses which can leverage tech and can optimize and can revolutionize their businesses using tech. So I believe that if you follow active investing for, uh, properly, then you can definitely beat the markets and not only just about trading, even in uh, uh, investing also. Like if you see in March, uh, when the COVID crash happened, for like at that point of time for last five years, the return of any passive product was zero. So for last five years- Exactly, that's the risk, money. yeah. But if you right. had an active approach towards the market, you would have taken some exit at some levels, you would have again entered. So your returns would have been significantly higher. So I believe that with a lot of people entering the market, with a lot of new ideas, a lot of companies educating the investors, I think active investing is the way forward and the way algo trading boom is happening, the way trading room is coming in, people are going to interact more, going to learn more and the approach should be more active rather than passive. I'll just add so, so, I, so, 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 yeah, so I, have, I have one more question to, to, uh, to follow up with, uh, with Sarab, right? Um, if, if, if a friend comes up to you, Sarab, and they want to invest in a mutual fund, right? Or they don't know anything about picking stocks, right? Just generally, right? What's the advice you give them? So uh, what I tell them is, so basically it depends on the risk appetite of the investor. But if he has surplus money, which he doesn't want for the next five, 10 years, I actually tell them to look for small cases, which invest are active small cases. So for example, there's a small case, which is only investing in special situations. So whenever there's an opportunity, they invest in that. There's uh, small cases, which are thematic small cases. They basically follow the trend. And when the markets like using quantitative models, they'll exit also at certain, uh, when, the, when they think the market is overheated. So I generally rather prefer than investing into a ETF or a, basically a mutual fund into an active product such as a small case. There are a lot of different active small cases active. So I generally advise them to focus more on these products rather than just uh, buying a mutual fund. Got it, got it. So let's now turn the table to Manu, right? Um, Manu, obviously you're from the active trading world. Uh, that's, you know, everyone knows that. Um, and yet again, you know, if you look at the general statistics, right? You know, you can make a very strong case that passive investing is the way to go, right? I mean, generally if you look at active fund managers, versus just general passive investing products. So for example, the, the Sensex has generated average CAGR of 17% over the past five years, right? But if someone does want to start actively trading in the markets, right? What are some things, you know, so some, some general considerations that, you know, they, they should think about uh, for them to do so confidently? Yeah, so on the first point, uh, uh, it's, it's clearly established that passive uh, gives you a relatively stable return over a period of time. Uh, it, it sort of mimics the index. But at the same time, there are a lot of active strategies as well, which have proven to sort of, uh, uh, you know, create some, generate some alpha. Uh, we know a lot of people doing momentum uh, related strategies wherein they are uh, sort of every three months or every six months, they are reshuffling their uh, portfolio depending on the momentum of the stocks and uh, this this has been like uh, there have been studies done for periods of 
decades uh, all along so that uh, i mean there there's enough proof for active investing as well that you can generate alpha by doing uh, uh, sort of these uh, these momentum strategies right so uh, on the second point that that you mentioned uh, which was uh, uh, getting started with just general active trading yeah right right so i think uh, uh, one of the good things that is happening in our times is that there's a lot of uh, uh, good material available uh, on the internet on on social media where you can learn stuff like learn app is doing a fantastic job there are uh, a lot of youtube channels which uh, help you getting educated in the markets so if someone really wants to get into this they can uh, go through these host of courses uh, there's a lot of good material there are i mean uh, i'll talk about uh, when i started off it was very difficult to get hold of uh, you know good traders active uh, investors uh, and learn from them but today it's become very uh, uh, i mean it's become relatively easier so my suggestion would be spend some time uh, learning different styles of active investing or trading going through uh, uh, some courses and uh, don't uh, sort of start off in a hurry give it 3 to 6 months at least to sort of understand what works for you what uh, you know a dif- a many different styles so what style works for you give some time uh, uh, like uh, recognizing that and then probably uh, that's 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 a good way to sort of start Uh, and meanwhile sure. yeah. uh, one can obviously uh, do the passive bit so the way i look at it is not uh, either or it's like it's a spectrum you have you can be in the middle as well so i know a lot of people who do uh, who were passive uh, for the most of their investing life uh, but now what they're doing is uh, their the passive fund is decent and they sort of take margin on that fund and do uh, some active trading as well to generate alpha so uh, so that's also a very good option wherein you get the best of both worlds sure sure yeah it makes a lot of sense so tino let's go to you right and let's kind of switch gears a little bit and let's talk about options cuz your your forte is options and you've been dealing with options for a long time you know one benefit to just general active investing and trading is that you can take advantage of volatility in the markets right you can kind of be on top of that volatility versus just generally being aligned with the markets and if a covid situation happens again god forbid you know you're going to be in a very bad place if you're just opting into a passive investing product right so let's talk about options and how you know how would a retail trader look at options as a way to take advantage of volatility in the markets hi ragu so coming to the option so i would say that option is the active trading all about it so there is nothing called as investments in options so for the option trader the positional is something which is more than 3 days so it is as good as that now coming to the option let's speak about the data so we talk about why options become so so important the very fact that in india if we talk about the volumes so we have nearly 51 lakh crores which was traded yesterday out of it nearly 50 and a half lakh was index option plus stock options uh-huh. so Mm-hmm. It is ninety seven point five to ninety eight percent all about options. So I would rather say that today, if the company is listed in a derivative market, if it's, it's an equity derivative market, no matter what, whether you are doing a fundamental analysis, whether you are doing a technical analysis, or whether you are doing an option trading, you need to look at the options data point because that gives you the cutting edge in your entire analysis. because where the crowd is we get the sentiment out of it now coming to the options we all know i won't go into the theoretical part of it the pricing part the only unknown factor in the option is volatility rest everything is on the plateau so the bid and ask what we are playing out is only and only the iv factor the volatility factor if someone feels that from here the volatility will go up they will buy an option if the someone feels the volatility will go down they will sell an option so i would say volatility is the soul of option trading so if you are able to get the nitty gritties of volatility the game is yours now coming to a retail trader i would really say that today we are living in a world where 
the new one, the someone who has just kick starting their career are completely learned people. They love mathematics. They love, they know what they are doing it. Earlier, it was not the same. Earlier, it was like the option math said, bull job. You should forget it. But today, the game is completely different. People love to understand this product. And believe me, options is completely, uh, you can say, sir, if you understand it, you get it. Now, yeah. volatility is something I say as a soul of option trading. So there are varieties of uh, volatility. Each has its own importance. Everything come together. So implied volatility is something which the, we'll all look out for. But if I say the number 20 or if I say the 20, number 80, both has its own importance for the instrument you're taking. So that's where we start looking at volatility, bring it down to a common factor, seeing like implied volatility rank, implied volatility percentile. So if the volatility is too low or the volatility is too high, avoid selling because there your gamma and those stuff come. If you're in a midway, you can go and do the buying of an option or the doing the hedge strategies. The benefit of options with the volatility is you can structure the way you want it. The non-linear characteristics of the option gives you the ample opportunities. So if I am a future trader, a, a simple future trader, what he does, he buy in future. What is the profile? Price going up, make money. Price going down, you lose out. The same future trade I can take into an option. I can buy a call and sell a put. But instead of going on the same strike, I bifurcate the strike. That creates a long combo. That gives me a cushion. So I have got the future profile in an option, but customized to my own range. So I believe that anything which is doable in your futures thing is doable in the option string. And if you have a proper structure made, in fact, you can create a structure on your loss making position, you can come out with literally one third of the loss. So for a, it's a lot of flexibility, making, yeah. Yeah, if a person is making 30 lakhs of loss, and if I say that was this 30 lakhs can come down to five lakhs, that's itself is an opportunity. So option has a world of opportunity, your historical volatility, future realized volatility difference people play. IVR, IVP is another way of playing. The best way is start playing out with the volatility. So convert your volatility to your underlying prices. So that's what mm -hmm. we do in concept. We have a product called a stop and target, wherein instead of looking at the pivot points, a plain technical one, take the pivot points of the volatility. So if Infosys has a volatility of 20 and India Bull Housing has a volatility of 60, I cannot go on with a simple price-wise underlying thing. I need to understand right. that India Bull in a normal scenario will move up 3% or move down 3%. But Infosys in a normal period will not do so. So right. create the volatility bands and use that volatility bands for your inquiry trading. Got it, got it. Yeah, so it's obviously, you know, options are super powerful and we can keep talking about options. Um, but I, I did want to kind of switch gears again a little bit. Let's go back to Pratik here, right? Let's, let's talk about building skills as a retail participant, right? Um, Pratik has been around the ed tech space for a long time, for as long as I've known him, actually. Um, and he's, he's interacted with like probably tens of thousands of traders, if not more than that. Just generally speaking, Pratik, if someone wants to get into active investing, active trading, right? What are some general skills that they need to build? You're, you're on mute. Sorry, super. So I'll just summarize uh, what Saurabh and Manu and Tina, at least what I understood from what they said, and then sort of make a timeline of what I think is going to happen in the future. Does that work, Raghu? We'll just work with that, Works. right? So yeah. Tina talked about volatility, and I think that was really nice. To me, my takeaway was a long-term investor who's passively investing, since that's what we're talking, can actually use freaking options to reduce his risk because he's in it for the long game. I think that's beautiful. And most investors don't understand that. Uh, Manu talked about that traders should start with three to six months. You can learn from other traders. And this opportunity, at least when we started, guys, was not there. Um, so that's amazing. I think these new guys have a lot more advantage than we do, uh, us old folks. And then Saurabh said, millions of new accounts have opened, sort of saying that the do-it-yourself investor is born in this generation, right? And he doesn't advise by someone, he wants to do it himself. So I think what's going to happen is 
all these new people entering the market, they're going to start with do it yourself. They're going to begin passively investing, which is great. We all know India is so underpenetrated, like less than two, 3% um, of people invest. I think we've, we've said this so many times. So now they need to optimize for two variables. One is picking stocks. Okay. The second is timing, which is enter and exit, right? Now, depending on how much time this person has, we'll optimize for these two variables. So we have picking stocks and we have timing. Now, if a person says, I don't have time to pick stocks, man, I don't want to analyze volatility. I don't want to do all this. I will just invest in an index fund, right? That's what products are built in such a way that, or you said small case, for example, I don't have to think that much. I believe in the theme. I don't want to pick stocks. I'll just select that, that bunch of stocks. Let's say he wants to optimize timing. I think there's nothing better in the world to actually learn a little bit of technical analysis and exit before a trend reverses. From an investor perspective, right? There are only two trends that we've seen change in the last one, two years. One was the Corona that I think um, Saurabh mentioned, right? Saurabh uh, mentioned, yeah. That was very easily exitable by even long-term investors if they wanted to optimize. Because just using something like a very simple moving average or just using something like a swing high, swing low, you can exit way before a crash happens because a downtrend we all know starts a little bit and then the trend changes. Unlike TV where they say, time change, ho gaya. we didn't expect this, but you know, traders can see that trend happening. So I see the shift of people going, their first level of interaction to become more active is trying to learn where to exit or partially exit a little bit and double the, doubling down when the trend changes. And this is very easily done because it's probably one decision a year. So I think that's what's gonna happen next. So three skills to answer your question, Raghu, three skills that a person needs to know. I think basics of how markets work, how technical analysis works and fundamental analysis works. Very, very basic stuff of contextual of how this works. Second is how to manage risk. Because in the end guys, no matter how smart we are, we've been trading for more than a decade, I think, we don't know what stock's gonna do well. We know our system is going to do well over a period of time. And if we can learn to manage this either by di diversifying into many stocks as an investor or as a trader, making sure we lose only 0.5% to trade, we've done most of the job, right? Uh, so if everyone can learn that, that'll be interesting. And third, how to manage cycles. I'm assuming this is a new trader or investor. If he just understands and finds one framework to understand where the bull market is starting, where it's exiting, where it's likely to reverse, et cetera, uh, over a very long-term chart, I think these three skills would really help people enter from passive into a little bit of active management um, where they're looking at their stocks maybe once a year. I, I hope I answered the question. No, 100%. This is a really nice answer, Pratik. Um, so I'm going to go to Sarab now, right, one by one. Um, so Sarab, you know, you did reference uh, coronavirus, and, and I was hoping someone, you know, you know, someone would bring that up because, you know, there is a general risk, right, with this new variant today and tomorrow is going to be another variant. And, and at some point in time, the markets just might, you know, might make a huge correction, right? It's almost like inevitable to happen at some point in time. So my question to you, Sarab, is as an active participant, right, whether you're an active investor, active trader, whatever it is, what are some general things you can do now to kind of safeguard yourself, uh, you know, for, for, for that type of event to happen in the future, right? You know, any sort of indicators you can maybe incorporate or general styles of active investing, active trading, what are certain things you can do to protect yourself from that event happening in the future? Okay, so as Raga. Pratik mentioned that you should focus more on learning technical analysis. Even if you have done simple moving averages, which you backtest doesn't have any long-term uh, uh, significance, still they provide early exits. So for example, if you are an active investor, okay, so for example, for me and Manu who, and even Tina who actively trade, so we follow the trend. So you can use any moving average or your tools, like suppose a moving average or suppose if the stock is breaking the high of previous, a lower previous month. So for example, let me give you an example. Asian paint since last 20 years in the monthly time frame has never broken the 20 moving average. So the long-term trend is intact. But if you take the example of Bajaj Finance, a stock like Bajaj Finance fell from 5,000 to 1,800. So as a retail investor, who can see a 70% drawdown on his portfolio? No one, right? And those who see will exit at 1,800 and only to regret to see the stock at 7,000, 8,000 now. So what I believe is even if you are a passive investor, what you could do is suppose you have a passive portfolio for the long term. When you feel that the market is volatile or when your active system, like suppose even if you use a simple moving average is giving you a signal 
you can what you can do is you can buy long term puts so at least during the crash suppose if you bought puts before the march fall in the fall you at least got benefited you made some money actively using trading just by buying simple puts and you you didn't have to exit your portfolio as well so you made money and when the markets recovered your portfolio again came back to where it was and one more thing which i want to point out is like if you see the history of the stock markets in the dot com bubble companies like infosys uh wipro all went up 200x but after the dot com bubble they all crashed and in fact came to the point they were trading so if you are basically buy and hold kind of investor you see 200x on your paper and again it's zero if you see before 2008 unitec went 100x jindal steel went 20x 30x again after the 2008 crash they were back to zero so it's not that you can just can buy and hold because i believe market goes in trends so you have some trend after few years some other sector will be in trend so pharma before this covid crash after the 2008 thing pharma stocks were in a bull run but after that if you see most of the pharma stocks for last few years are in a sideways trend so what i believe is you pick a trend be with the trend you can use a simple moving average basically a 20 moving average on a monthly time frame if you are a long term investor if that is broken you exit your portfolio look for other stocks which are hitting all time high so i strongly believe in momentum investing in fact there was a study done that if you buy a stock which is hitting a new all time high because in this age of information the fundamentals change later the prices gives you advance information the stocks which are hitting all time high is always on my radar so whenever I go on tv all my stock picks are basically stocks which are at all time high so even in this current market if you see it stock yesterday markets crashed but it stocks were up in the green so uh, what i believe is with passive investing you can incorporate something as uh, active thing so two things which you can do is basically follow a trend so some sim- uh, simple moving average on the monthly time frame basically you can choose a 20 moving average or on the daily time frame 200 day moving average if the stock closes below that you can basically exit some of your holdings and when it again goes above you can again buy or if it closes below 200 day you can buy some long term puts so that you can at least in the fall you are the downside risk is mitigated and one more thing what most most people do is you have a active portfolio you can do covered calls against your portfolio so lot of investors i know are actually doing it and that gives you additional 7 to 8% return per year on your passive portfolio so even you do it for 3 4 years and even if you see a 30% drawdown net you have not lost because you have made money through uh, basically option selling and tina would be able to explain more about that because Uh, she is a greater option but covered call is something which you all can do so my advice would be focus the markets believe in trends and you can use any moving averages and that when the price closes below this moving average you can exit some of your allocation and when the price again goes above you can shift to different trends awesome so you know so so obviously you know a, a, a lot of learnings to to come from everyone's answers here it's just it's just a really nice conversation last question before we hand it off to harsh for the next segment of the event um this is from manu right any last words of encouragement for any attendees today looking to make the switch from passive to active uh just take uh, some of the points that everyone has made uh, as in uh, being on the active side you will be able to manage your risk better there are multiple options as tina suggested uh so it's like uh, uh, uh not like zero or one uh, you can be anywhere uh, between that range if you if you are using options right uh exiting on time having a fixed uh, risk per trade or risk per investment kind of a thing so all these tools are available to you when you switch to the active uh, investment and trading style uh it's about learning those over a period of time uh, as you practice you you'll get to learn and they will uh, be of immense help uh, especially uh, if you are a retailer i mean there are a lot of things that you can do as a retailer that an institution cannot do and uh, most of these things are on the active side so uh, yeah so my my thing would be that uh, start exploring these uh, i'm sure Six months, twelve months, you you will be in a very uh, in a better place compared to just being on the passive side. Awesome, uh, thanks, guys. You know that was a really nice conversation. I personally learned a lot. I think the major takeaways there are, you know, there's no 
concrete right or wrongs to anything here, right? I think ultimately a lot of this depends on the individual. But that being said, you know, I think you can make a very strong argument um, that at least you should consider active investing versus passive investing, right? Uh, and as you know, Manu uh, indicated earlier, there's a lot of uh, resources available online to find good active fund managers. Um, and you have you know amazing companies like Quantsap, you know, providing a lot of analytics to kind of get in, you know introduced to options in a more kind of um, you know uh, easy manner, right? And of course, you have companies like LearnApp that just teach you what to do. So. You know they're they're kind of you know doing everything for you basically. So um, thanks guys, a really nice conversation. Now I'm going to pass it on to Harsh, and Harsh is going to walk us through trading rooms. Uh, thank you so much for that, Raghu, and uh, thank you so much for all the panelists on the first uh, group. Uh, you know it was very insightful to hear those thoughts, and uh, I would obviously like to take this opportunity right now to share with you all. Uh, you know something that the team at Rain Platforms has been working for over the last uh, you know, 15 odd months. And we do hope that you'll find as much as utility and enjoy the whole product as much as we've had making it for y'all. Uh, without further ado, I would like to just present to y'all uh, trading rooms. I have a small video that I would like to share with y'all and then actually walk you through the entire platform. Uh, the application itself is gonna be available for the public to start using uh, later in the day, it's, it's scheduled to go live at 6 p.m. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, we are going to be, have this entire application to showcase and walk through with y'all. Um, just one second, I need to share my screen. Trading rooms, as the name suggests, uh, we like to call it automated social investing. It takes two of the most powerful trends in our modern you know, uh, internet and brings them together. One is that of social networking, which we are all very familiar with the likes of a LinkedIn or a Twitter or a YouTube. And it, it goes about taking those, that application and brings it together with the very powerful tool of automated investing a very new trend that is developing in our industry. So essentially trading rooms is what we like to call automated social investing, where in which for the first time a user, it could be anybody, a stock enthusiast, a portfolio manager, an investment advisor, you could be a student, you could come onto our platform and create your very own trading room. A trading room as the name suggests is meant to be this personal space very similar to a, you know, a channel that we've gotten very familiar with in our recent times. And you're able to come on to this space, create your model trading or investment portfolio. And thereafter you're able to socialize it with friends, family and the public at large. Once you start socializing your ideas, you're able to learn along with different people. You're able to go about communicating, ideating, building upon different theses. And thereafter you're able to go about also inviting people to follow your training room. You're able to go about creating a following. You're able to go about allowing for members to come on board and start indulging in the trading activity that takes place amongst your training room. So for the first time, you today have a platform or a voice and it could be anybody. We do not restrict the platform to any single persona. It's a completely openly architected platform which allows anybody to come on and create a trading room and thereafter propagate their investment and trading ideas. So what you're seeing on your screen right now is, you know, the typical landing page where a user's first journey starts off. The user comes onto the application and they're able to go about discovering different forms of trading rooms. We have, um, you know, a couple of trading rooms that we put down based on certain ranks. These are trending rooms 
popular trading rooms, the newest trading room, for example, or rooms based on a certain degree of activity. Users can also go about finding rooms of their interest by going about going to certain collections. We have kind of sorted out or you know, collected different trading rooms based on certain ways in which they go about conducting their activities. It could be a room which focuses on intraday trading. It could be a room which is focusing on short-term trading or long-term investments. Whatever your preference of investment or trading is, you are able to go about finding a room and start to participate thereon. I was focusing on the fact that today anybody can come onto the application and create a trading room. I just want to show you how easy it is for a user to come on and start their entire journey. So you come onto the platform and let's say you created an account and thereafter you want to create your trading room. You need to come into the application and click here and I'll show you how the, the room gets created. Let's say we want to call this uh, you know, uh, weekend trading. You can write a small description about your trading room. We engage in there are there are after once you go about writing a little bit about your room, you're able to go about describing what is the base portfolio value with which you want to run a room. Every room has a minimum value with which the room owner is able to conduct his trading activity. So for example, I believe that weekend trading, it's going to be a room where we engage in passive investment and trading strategies. I want to go about running this room where in which I build a model portfolio of say a lack of rupees. I want to restrict my trading activity to a point where I'm constrained with a capital base of a lack of rupees. Thereafter, I can go about choosing whether a room is going to be a public room or a private room. A public room is a room which is openly discoverable by everybody on the platform. So anybody can come discover the platform, see the activity of the platform of the, of the room and thereafter become a member. There are no restrictions whatsoever. However, if I choose to, I can even make a room, a private room. A private room is a room which is only shared with people that I would like to choose so this is where, for example, I want to create a trading room for my family. I can create a trading room and only make sure that the people that can use it are my family members. Likewise, probably I'm at work and I want to create a private trading room for my colleagues at work. I can come on here and create a private trading room, which is restricted to the members of my workspace. If I would like to create a public trading room for the reasons that I believe that I want to propagate myself, I want to go about creating a public persona, that is also very much possible. Once you go about choosing the type of room you want to create, the entire application allows for rapid monetization across the board, be it a room owner, be it a brokerage, or be it an everyday user who's using the application. There are different ways in which you're able to monetize your trading and investing activity. I'm just gonna to showcase to you how a room owner can go about monetizing their activity. So we've, we're going about creating this room called weekend trading. I want to go about now making this room a uh, paid for room. I can choose right on the application itself whether I would like to go about charging a fee for people to interact with me on the room or it's going to be a free room. So let's say, for example, I want the room to be a, uh, you know, a paid room. I can choose that I would like to charge a fee. We also know that in the financial services space, a lot of people like to go about typically trying out a product, getting a feel for the person or you know, they're, you know, whoever they're interacting with before they get behind the activity. So we allow for a user to right off the bat, go about choosing whether they want a room to be enabled with a free trial or not. Thereafter, a user can come on and you know, describe what are the different types of membership plans they want to make. So for example, I want the members of this room to pay me a small fees for the activity that we do. Let's say, for example, I say, if you want to go about becoming a member to my room, you need to pay me a thousand rupees. Thereafter, you're able to go about interacting with the room and its trading activities to a you know, perspective where in which you're able to trade and invest up to a lack of rupees because that's the base portfolio value. I can put that down. We also allow for distribution of a trading room. We understand that a lot of people want to propagate good investment and trading ideas people who are good with their skill and craft. 
So let's look at this example. I am a room owner today and I go about creating this trading room. And let's say that people are ha happy with the kind of conversations that are taking place in my trading room and they want to go about you know, propagating this benefit to different people, their friends and family. However, they would like some kind of incentive for them to be able to do so. I can direct that incentive right here itself. For every person that refers somebody onto the trading room, they themselves can go about making a certain, you know, a certain fee from the whole process. Coming back to the point that the entire application allows for different stakeholders to monetize different aspects of their trading and investing activity on the platform. Not only can I choose a monthly membership plan, I can go about describing a quarterly and annual plan as well. So we have openly architected the platform and we do not restrict at any point of time, anybody from the way in which they want to use or go about conducting the activity on the room. Thereafter, I can go, you know, I describe the trading room a little bit more in detail. So for example, this room that we are creating, let's say I'm going to be restricting it to, it's going to be a multi-strategy room. I'm going to do different types of things. I probably believe that, uh, you know, the room at its closest level, you know, indulges in index trading. Probably my holding period is going to be positional in nature. I am able to describe different forms of holding period, whether it's intraday, daily. This allows for users to go about knowing what is the type of activity they can expect from a room. Thereafter, I can go about describing the instruments I potentially want to trade. Let's say on this room, I typically dwell with, you know, investing in stocks, futures, options, and occasionally I probably may even go about dealing with ETFs. Great. I can also describe the type of markets I want to go about trading or investing into. I want to restrict my activity, let's say, to just equities at this point in time. I can do that. We also allow for the, the room owner to go about describing in detail all the other factors that typically go into their investing and trading uh, decision-making process. This again allows for people that are going to be following my room to have a better understanding of what can they expect from the room. Let's say I focus on growth stocks. Let's say I focus on uh, equity long shot and probably I look for you know, uh, diversification as my key factors when I make my decisions. Once I describe my room, I'm able to go about creating it. And success, my room has been now successfully created. Great. So once I go about creating a room, and this is what a typical room looks like, uh, you know, you have an about section where you have the description. We recently created this room called Weekend Trading. So I have my description over here. As and when I'm able to create a performance with, re with regards to the room, the performance details are available as well. And I have the different membership plans that I had described that come up as well. So typically, when a user goes about finding my room, this is what they would see. And if they would like to become a member, they can go about choosing the membership plan that they would like to, to follow. Uh, make a payment and you know this is where you can put in the distribution code that I had spoken about and once you do that you're able to subscribe to this, the room. If I subscribe and make the payment I become a member of the room and once I go about becoming a member of the room I can openly engage in all the trading activity of that room. What is a typical trading activity of the room? Now we have for example the about section which gives in great detail what the room is about. We also have a feed section, which tells users about, you know, what are the activities of a certain room. So I am a room owner right now. And let's say I would like to go about, you know, communicating certain trading and investment ideas to, let's say my followers, I can make different degrees of social posts. So for example, over here, I found an interesting video the other day on YouTube, and I would want for, you know, my followers on the room to basically get behind it. I'm able to socialize all of that through a very intuitive trading wall that all of us are very familiar with across different social platforms. I'm able to comment, I'm able to like, I'm able to go about communicating whatever my thoughts are with regards to the room, it's with, with regards to the post itself. So let's say, for example, I like this post. This is very, I'm able to go about, you know, communicating my thoughts. People can then go about propagating those views and so on and so forth. So this allows for open conversations about me as a trading room, me as an owner of a trading room, and how I think about different stocks. Let's say, for example, I have a view on a certain stock. I think uh, Reliance uh, 
trees is a good stop to get behind. I can put down different thoughts and you know let's see how people interact with them thereafter. Uh, the other aspect, which is the most important part of the entire process, is the fact that I can create a model portfolio and go about making sure all the members of my trading room are thereafter being able to follow me in a different capacity. So let's say, for example, I come onto my portfolio. At this point of time, my portfolio consists of three stocks, ACC, IDEA, and Reliance. I want to go about placing a trade. Let's say I want to pick up ITC. I come onto the, the room. I click on the execution control. We offer all the simple orders that a typical brokerage application at this point of time supports. For example, we allow for intraday orders, delivery orders, market orders, limit orders, stop loss market orders, as well as stop loss limit orders. These are all the very simple order types that a typical brokerage goes about you know, dealing with. So for example, let's say I want to go about, I feel that, you know, uh, going about uh, you know, buying into ITC is a good idea at this point of time. I can come in over here, choose what I need to, and thereafter place an order. And once I do, the order gets executed. What happens right now is all the members to my trading room are here about going to be able to purchase the stock as well. Once I go about making this purchase, all of these users who are on my room will also go about you know, having this order in place. A user typically can come onto the application, find a trading room, and they can link their brokerage account. We at this point of time support well over you know, 12 brokerages. And once they go about uh, you know, choosing a brokerage that they're used to, they can come onto the application and go about linking their existing brokerage account. And once they're done with that, they're able to configure their entire application to go about uh, following us. I have put in some test credentials at this point of time, hence the verification has failed. However, if I had put in the, the right API details, my brokerage account would be linked on the platform and thereafter I can go about following all the trades that are taking place on a trading room. We have gone about you know, very clearly uh, making the entire process very easy for different users. For example, you know, I as a room owner, I'm going to get a lot of payments. I'm going to have to make a lot of payments to different people within, within the entire application. The entire application allows for automated billing automated invoicing, and also you're able to go about receiving all the payments that you're supposed to get as a room owner in a very quick, simple, automated manner. All I need to do is come onto my account setting. I can choose from a whole host of different bank accounts, and thereafter I can go about mapping a bank account and go about making sure I receive all the payments towards my room that I have gone about monetizing. So the entire application allows for hyper monetization. It allows for hyper socialization, and it also allows for trading in a fully automated manner. Uh, we have a group chat as well, which is restricted to only members of a trading room. So for example, you know, we spoke about weekend trading. I can come in over here and make a certain chat only to the, to the members of my room, my members. So there are different ways in which different people are able to go about transacting and you know, interacting with each other. So the three things of you know, trading rooms, the hallmark of trading is socialization of trading and investing ideas, automation of trading and investment ideas, and lastly, the allowing for open monetization of different activities that take place on the application. Uh, in the paucity of time, and given that we have an amazing panel that is ahead of us, I'm going to actually switch over to starting the second discussion very soon. But we would love for all of you all to, you know, very soon get onto the platform, register yourselves and start using the entire application. The application is meant for everybody, whether you're a trader, whether you're an investor, whether you are a professional trader, it does not matter. There is something for you across the board. This allows for open, you know, socialization of investment ideas and a sim singular place for y'all to execute those investment and trading ideas. We hope that you enjoy the entire process and we look forward to having you on board very soon. Uh, so that's basically it at the product level. And now I'm going to uh, have uh, you know, the, the second uh, group panel discussion start through. Uh, so without further ado, we have a very interesting uh, set of people 
that we are going to have on our second panel. Uh, I'm going to start with this introducing the panelists at this point in time. Uh, we have with us today Tejas from Fires. Tejas uh, is you know well known for building one of I would say India's most sought after uh, you know trading uh, brokerage, a very young brokerage that serves you know our trading community day in and day out. And I have personally seen you know some of the amazing things that they do back at uh, Fires. And uh, love to have you on board today. Uh, we have Raghava. Raghava is the director of products at uh, India's largest crypto trading platform, CoinSwitch Kuba. Raghava personally has been instrumental in generally going about propagating open API technologies. And uh, he has had stints in the past as well, where he has you know, worked tirelessly to go about making this phenomenon that we know as open API technologies become a reality in India. So love to have you on board as well today, Raghava. And we have uh, Smriti today. Uh, Smriti has very recently launched uh, Stack Finance. It is an application that makes everyday investing very simple and effective for you know, the millennial of today. Uh, obviously, we'd love to hear her thoughts on how you know, her journey through the entire process and how technology is helping her company as well in going about taking investing to the masses. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's get started. Um, the discussion for today is proliferation of open API technologies and how it has affected and changed the retail landscape. I'm gonna start with a question directed towards uh, Tejas. Uh, Tejas, open API technology is today mainstream, right? The reality is that, you know, everyday users, thousands and lakhs of users are using open API technologies to better their experiences. Fires was one of the first pioneers, if I'm not wrong, in really leading this entire charge by opening up open API technologies, you know, well before it became a real phenomenon. And it's often misunderstood that, you know, API technologies and, you know, leads to a very complicated processes and so on and so forth. But I'm pretty sure that at the time in which you made your decisions, you would have had a lot of, you would have thought of a lot of utility for this technology, right? What was the thought process behind it? And what was it that you envisaged, you know, two to two, three years back when you started this whole process of opening up your entire brokerage towards open API technologies? And what are some of the utilities that you've seen actually take place? And what would you kind of, you know, how would you kind of see that entire thing through? Hi, Arsh. Uh, so firstly, congratulations uh, on launching Trading Rooms. Uh, it was a very insightful demo and looks like the product is super promising and I'm sure we'll add a lot of value uh, to the trading community. Um, yeah, so we were among the first brokers that uh, opened out our APIs back in 2019. Um, we, we were catering to a very small niche, which is essentially active traders who do a lot of trading volumes. Uh, and so many of them had very specific preferences uh, when it came to trading. Uh, preferences like we they wanted to trade on a different front end uh, they wanted to customize order placement they probably wanted to um, uh, automate their trades or or stuff like that so uh, the way to make that happen is essentially to give them api access uh, so that they can use they can execute whatever their trading logic can uh, uh, configure their preferences and then use our api for trade execution and so that's how it started off. And uh, with regards to uh, the utility, I mean, traders, I mean, so firstly, it's useful for algo trading, right? Uh, retail algo trading. It, it can be as simple as a, uh, a simple, very simple moving average uh, crossover buy signals, for instance, or it can be a very complicated trading logic, uh, which can be connected to the API for automated investing and trading. Uh, apart from that, uh, we also power most of the fintech platforms that offers offer like a uh, like uh, algo marketplaces and API bridges, uh, and so we basically provide the uh, connect for trading to such platforms as well, and so they add value by uh, uh, maybe making it more simple for traders to do algo trading. So yes, there are a lot of use cases, but primarily. Uh, these are the ones that uh, need uh, to be spoken of. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much for that. Uh, you know, just following up uh, with uh, Raghava as to where you left off, right? 
Now, you know, Raghava obviously uh, is in director of products at uh, CoinSwitch Kuba, a different world from our very formal financial industry that we have seen. Uh, you know, crypto in the, the crypto industry obviously has uh, led the charge when it comes to, you know, technology. I think one of the benefits of the entire space is that, that it was not necessarily burdened by a lot of legacy systems. It's an open, you know, technology that has basically come through. I think there are well over 100 million users today you know, using you know, the entire application just in India alone, well, well more than what the formal financial markets you know, command. Raghava, from your perspective, right, uh, how would you really look at these technologies? Uh, you know, today, APIs essentially power all of the crypto space, if I'm not wrong. How would you kind of you know, opine on the, you know, the benefits of the technology? What would you like to let users know in general as to how will this entire space evolve going forward? Hey, uh, first of all, uh, congratulations on launching uh, Rain platforms. So it's a phenomenal uh, you know, innovation that you're trying to bring to the table. Uh, coming back to the question, uh, with respect to how you know, open APIs can change the landscape, uh, today, CoinSwitch Kuber is in existence because uh, the founders of the company, uh, you know, two or three years back, they wrote a small API just to find the best prices for themselves to, you know, buy and sell uh, across Binance or Wazirex or even CoinDCX. And uh, they basically tested that out in the market and it had a very good uh, support from the market. A lot of people started using it and then they built a mobile and a, web, a mobile application on top of that. And today that's like 15 million user base of CoinSwitch Kuber. So you can see uh, how a small API can power such a large player to come into the ecosystem and you know become a leading player in the indian space and today india has uh, the one of the largest crypto investors or traders uh, that are there in the world and uh, to answer the question so open apis are here to here to stay and they bring a lot of innovation to the table on top of that you know the amount of liquidity that gets you know pulled into the system to the exchanges is phenomenal right so the liquidity game uh, today uh, with coins which could wear with 15 million, 40, 14 million customs coming into the market, that that adds a lot of value to the system itself, and uh, which cannot be ignored. And uh, th that's that's the power of an open API, right? A simple API can you know foster so much of innovation into the ecosystem itself, and it has a lot of similarities with respect to how stock booking works, and. Uh, so today, uh, like you rightly mentioned, it does not come up with some of the baggages of the legacy systems that you know today a broker is supposed to go through. Uh, with respect to you know the fundamental architecture, architecture itself is open in nature. So you can you know if you have a few bitcoins, you can go and upload it in Binance and try to encash it or convert it into different other currencies, including fiat. So that's possible because today it's open and it's not like you have to go through certain processes or go through a web or a mobile application itself to go and trade. You can use the or leverage the APIs to do that. So APIs definitely uh, support innovation and uh, it will also foster some of the fintech uh, platforms which are working on innovative ideas to come to the you know, forte and uh, do something on top of what has been done before by others. So that's my opinion on them. Thank you so much, Raghava, for that. Uh... Uh, you know, you kind of mentioned, right, that it's going to power a lot of different applications going forward, right? Uh, today, we have Smriti with us, who has been busy, you know, building out Stack Finance, uh, some, you know, application that's looking to make the everyday interactions of, uh, you know, the everyday millennial Indian investor a lot more easier. Smriti, in your opinion, like, you know, obviously, technology is really helping us getting out the ground root, uh, you know, getting out of the grassroots. And, how has, uh, you know, how do y'all look at this entire space? Do y'all do believe that there is more space for technology to kind of creep in and let things move through? Or do you believe that there needs to be some form of a more uh, constructive way in which you allow for technology to kind of allow, it, allow applications to go through? How has your experience with Stack Finance kind of, you know, shape these views? Okay. I think uh, for us at Stack, uh, the app is... Uh... Uh, you know, majorly built for people who find investing itself very difficult or people who have just started their investing journey, who have uh, certain life goals in mind, but they just don't feel confident enough. They don't have the required knowledge to sort of figure out what's the right way for them to achieve those goals and how should they go about investing. 
So uh, considering that it's built for everyday audience, people, uh, you know, mostly these retail investors who are very new to this world of investing yet want to invest and make their money work for them. So I think uh, for us, particularly in this product, technology has played a, a you know, a very integral role in uh, simplifying the user journey. So one feedback that we've got from all the users is that it's extremely seamless. And I think uh, the only reason behind all of that is actually open APIs and technology, because had it not been there, we would have struggled very hard to sort of, you know, bring the bring the asset classes that people actually need on the platform, um, all of them integrated in one place, make the entire user journey smooth so that people don't have to sort of, you know, um, jump onto different apps to complete whatever processes that there are. So I'll, I'll start from, let's say, onboarding itself, uh, thanks to, you know, uh, CKYC, for example. We've seen that people now don't have to, you know, um, at each and every platform that, that they're installing or the app that they're installing, they don't have to do the KYC again and again. That's really facilitated a lot of, um, I would say, ease for not just the users, but also as, for us as businesses, because, um, you know, people often sort of uh, refrain from submitting their documents again and again. They don't want to fill out all those forms again and again. So I think that's definitely one point. Uh, we've also integrated with a lot of brokers on the platform because we believe that uh, you know it's it makes no sense for people to be again opening an account with us and then going through that entire tedious process we wanted it to be extremely seamless so if you're an, if you are let's say a you know zerodha account holder if you are an upstock account holder why not you know use our platform as just a means to sort of figure out what your investment portfolio should be and let the broker handle the rest so i mean for us also as businesses we feel that uh, open apis help us uh, reduce the time to launch as well. So we don't have to literally, um, I think they just pointed out earlier, we don't really have to wait for the licenses. It's more like, I think it used to be called as banking as a service initially for new banks. For us, I think it's more like a brokerage as a service. So we don't really have to uh, wait for brokerage licenses or, you know, entire comp compliances, et cetera. I think we can really launch all the, all the features very fast for people who are already using different broking services. They can just hop onto a platform, experience it. And it's such a seamless experience that they don't have to migrate to other places. Um, so I think, yes, technology has played a very pivotal role in simplifying the entire investing journey. And I think it's we've just touched the surface when it comes to all of this innovation. There's a lot that that's there to explore. And with platforms like, uh, in fact, even trading rooms, I, I believe that, you know, you guys are going to uh, do wonders with that. I really love the platform, by the way. Congratulations. It seems really amazing. And I am pretty sure people are going to love using it, too. So, yeah, that's that's what I think about uh, technology intervention to all of this. Thank you so much, Mithi. So. I think the takeaway from Smithy is that it's helped simplifying things, right? But at the other end of the spectrum, we always have this question, right? Um, you know, technologies can be sometimes misunderstood as being uh, overwhelming, a little bit of a powerful beast. Sometimes, you know, there's a little bit of a fear mongering amongst, you know, different quarters of the society. Uh, Tejas, you know, you've probably been experienced in all of this. You've seen different quarters of, uh, you know, different stakeholders kind of uh, you know, see different processes along your entire journey, right? Right. What, in your opinion, you know, is that there's a certain misunderstanding about, you know, open API technology, the word algos, it's kind of, you know, usually thought of as this black box, if Absolutely. I may, right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. How would you kind of, you know, put it in a simple term, is it actually as, uh, as scary as we kind of make it out to be? Does it really pose as much as a risk as people kind of, uh, you know, suppose it does? Or are there any benefits as well? Have you seen instances where people have been able to reduce risk or you know, manage the way in which they kind of look at things, simplify processes? How do you look at the whole process? Well, um, firstly, I think uh, speaking of the benefits, right? It has a lot of benefits. Uh, it saves uh, people from their own emotional devices, right? Because uh, in trading, like Raghu said earlier in the day, uh, is 90% of the traders lose. In fact, I'd go further than that to say that 90% of traders lose 90% of their capital in the first 90 days. And primarily, it's because uh, they are victim to their own emotions, emotional devices. And so uh, it's very difficult for newcomers or even for that matter, uh, those who have traded for a few years to control their emotions. Like recently, the, the recent fall, right? If you're a derivatives trader 
and uh, uh, if you were, if you went through the recent fall in the markets, it would be very difficult to hold out your long positions, and you'd end up making uh, decisions which would you'd cut your losses and then and then enter again at higher values, and and primarily these decisions would be driven by emotions, not trading logic per se. So algo trading cuts out emotions from the process of decision making, and that's a great thing. Uh, it it increases the lifespan uh, of a trader in general and also allows uh, to allocate capital more effectively and in a more rational manner. So he's not going to go all in on one trade because he thinks that, uh, you know, it has to reverse uh, uh, from here or, or, you know, all this bottom fishing stuff uh, won't happen if you're an algo trader. Uh, so it, it, in terms of the benefits, like there are so many benefits uh, of algo trading in general, uh, but on the flip side, right? Um, uh, what is it uh, on the flip side? Well, there are no disadvantages really. You know, the fears are totally misplaced because th the recent circular that came out by SEBI, uh, like it does start off by identifying the benefits of algo trading. So the regulator also acknowledges that there are benefits and there are benefits for sure. Um, it goes without saying, but I think they are more concerned about uh, unqualified advisors, right? That's a, that's a huge problem in India. The investment advisor guidelines that were that came out uh, in 2013. Uh, so uh, that agenda is to basically uh, make sure that only qualified advisors are giving advice and those who are not qualified don't because then there is no erosion of wealth uh, yeah. or, or rather, uh, you know, to reduce the possibility of uh, you know, rampant uh, uh, unqualified advice. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's an area of concern. And apart from that, I think um, just this, uh, this other fear that, you know, there'd be some fat finger trades and misfiring that can uh, uh, that can destabilize uh, the system in general, uh, like a flash crash of sorts, just move a stock price because of large orders and stuff like that. Uh, so I, I'd say that those things can easily be addressed. Um, but uh, overall, I think algo trading is basically rule-based investing, right? Like that's all it is. Uh, it's not complicated. And so the fears are misplaced. I don't know if I've answered your question uh, correctly. Yeah, me. I think uh, there's a lot of light thrown in there. They just, uh, you know, so the idea is very simple, right? And the elephant in the room, right? So we have an interesting uh, set of, reg no, the industry finds itself at a very interesting point in time where technology is obviously kind of going to propagate a lot of the future. We have a, a huge consumer base wanting to make use of the utility and of course, there are certain fears that need to be safeguarded for, you know. So like another thing, another thing, actually, Harsh, that I'd like to add here is like nobody really has the time today uh, to sit and trade all day long, right? Because everybody either has a business or a job that one has to attend to. And trading requires attention. If you're, if you're a discretionary trader, you'll either have to be on your app or in front of your system and observe the markets to trade. And so algo trading actually adds a lot of value in that sense because you can do what you're good at and you can make your money in your profession. And uh, on the side, your system trades for you is essentially executing on behalf of you. And that's all it is. Yeah. And uh, the benefits of that uh, cannot be understated because this adds a lot of value. Yeah. It's very well put. So you're looking at productivity, you're looking at the reduction of risk at a large level, and you're looking at clarity of thought when you trade and invest through algos. Yeah. I think that's the good way of kind of summing up some of the benefits of um, you know, algo trading, and I probably just for the benefit of the users, like let people know that algo trading is just one of the utilities that comes off open API technologies. As Smriti had touched upon, it's kind of changed the way in which KYC is done. It's changed the way in which you kind of yeah. interact with brokerages. The idea at a very large level is to make everyday users' lives a lot more simple and less prone to risk. Uh, you know, on that note, I'm going to ask a last question to Raghava and then, you know, we can probably, uh, you know, end this discussion. Raghava, so, you know, again, coming back to the fact that y'all are at the forefront of technology at the entire, you know, when you look at crypto as a space, you probably now have this realm where, you know, with the regulator coming on, looking at regulating certain, certain activities when it comes to the formal financial markets. So you're going to have two markets now, one which is completely running through on a very high tangent, uh, you know, technology driven space and the other one where it's probably going to be high degree of regulation. 
what advice would you probably like to share from your experiences of you know being at the forefront of technology probably having to see at scale a lot of the problems work through what were your learnings what was something that you could probably share with the general audience hey uh, so i'll add on to some of the points they just mentioned uh, and then you know uh, talk about crypto right so uh, they just mentioned uh, rightly that uh, you cannot track the market 100% of the time when you're working right now in the crypto space you multiply that for 24/7 so crypto markets are not 9:15 to 3:30 and then you can simply you know shut off your system and go back and have a peaceful sleep you have extra you know uh, leverages that you have taken and you have slept and the market has moved and today uh, doge and those kind of you know currencies are you know fluctuate and the volatility is so high i mean you can lose a fortune by just by sleeping around and not even you know going Uh, and tracking the markets now you need uh, some kind of logic to track and work for you while you are not there right so there the open apis are the way, only way to basically g- create those kind of rules or algorithms to make sure you basically track your investments and make sure you're not losing out big and the second important thing that i wanted to bring is today the young india is coding right you have white junior white hat juniors of the world who is trying to teach you know youngsters to code and uh, from a fifth grade itself now what will happen to all these people you don't expect them to only use your mobile application or web application to simply go and trade so they will eventually start coding and they will explore about open apis you know the way open apis have lev- revolutionized the payment industry it's the same thing that's happening to broking the reason why today about 30 brokers are opening up their apis is because of the inherent advantages of what's happening there the same thing is also available uh, on the crypto side as well so crypt- on the crypto side obviously you know it's it's not even you know localized to indian market it's, it's it's truly global it connects and it's a decentralized finance and tomorrow uh, with all metaverse and those kind of new age technologies and web3 coming in so all this is going to explode and it's going to create a new array of opportunities for you know young startups uh, or young millennials who are you know trying to build some intelligent applications on top of that so all in all it's a it's a it's actually we are at the cusp of you know innovating and creating something extraordinary for the you know entire world not only india and uh, crypto or open apis these are the you know one of the some of the things that we are actually can see the rest of the things we are not able to see because we are not connected and not so retail in nature uh, yeah that's that's my view on it uh, uh you know thank you so much i'm going to end this discussion on you know certain personal observation you know having been in this uh, industry as long as i have and this, this is something very personal to me um uh, it is very rare that we've actually seen our country lead the charge when it comes to technologies and i think for the first time we are right up there with the rest of the world i have seen an underbelly of a movement in some sort uh with you know our very very strong coding base a very very strong set of engineers the general technical talent that we have that has led to us probably being right in the forefront of this entire movement and uh, you know i thank everybody who have been on this panel today tejas raghava smriti for your own contributions in your own way with the industry we look forward to building an amazing community for everybody and hopefully we have a better a uh, more fruitful you know trading and investment journey going forward we look forward as always to build more beautiful products for everybody that's involved and thank you so much for joining in today and hope you hopefully you all will soon set up your trading rooms account and uh, share with us your experiences as well uh, i'm going to now hand it over to raghu yes thanks harsh um Thanks guys that was a really nice conversation thanks Smriti thanks Raghav and uh Tejas and um uh, you know I I got to learn a lot about open API I got to learn a lot about fires and I got to learn a lot about you know um uh, uh stack finance and and uh coin switch as well um so you know today's event by the way for all the attendees who are still there um we will be sharing a link uh with the entire event right so if you're if you're still here um you will be receiving uh, a link for the entire event so you can always you know recap any of the conversations if you missed anything someone said 
No problem. Uh, and we're just going to go jump right into the prize winners, right? Because um, we do have a few prize winners. So the prize winners are going to be Share Rich, uh, Shadavarnan, and uh, Mahek Harkani. So those are the three prize winners for today. Um, thank you so much for everyone who attended the event. Uh, it was our pleasure, you know, to host all the panelists. Um, thank you to all the panelists for taking the time for today. You know, uh, it really means a lot to us. And, uh, you know, for all the attendees, you know, thank you for uh, spending your, um, your, your Saturday, Saturday in India, Saturday morning with us. Um, I'm in Texas right now. It is 1250 here in the morning, but, um, you know, the things we do for entrepreneurship. And so, um, you know, we really enjoyed, you know, walking you guys through trading rooms. Um, we've been spending a lot of time on trading rooms. We spent the past you know, basically 15 to 18 months building up trading rooms. Um, and we're really, really excited to launch the product. And uh, it's really nice to be able to get the feedback, you know, from, from all the panelists and uh, from all the, you know, people who, you know, who we know in, in the community. Um, and, um, you know, for anyone who's attending, who's still there, um, please register for trading rooms. Um, you will be able to set up your own room. Um, and basically start using the product in a full-fledged manner. You know, we are able to scale the product to thousands of users. Um, and we're looking forward to building a very powerful social network, you know, for automated social investing in India. And uh, we do have global ambitions, you know, so we do want to take our uh, product to uh, the U.S. next year. So that's something else we do want to do with Trading Rooms. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, you will be receiving an email from us with the uh, entire event in video format. Cheers. Uh, I would just like to add the application <clears throat> goes live at 6 p.m. this evening. So please do have a look at it. And thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me and all the best, Raghu and the entire team at Trading Rooms. Uh, we look forward to this. It's very exciting. Thank you. All the very best, Raghu and uh, Harsh. Uh, it's been uh, uh, I have gone through the application as a, a testing person. So I definitely know the potential of the application and it can add significant value to some of the people who are going to be, you know, early adopters of using trading rooms. All the very best. Yeah, we still need to, yeah. So we still need to integrate with you guys, Raghav. You're one of the few people, you you and Smriti actually. So we have to find a way to integrate with, with, uh, with Stack as well, you know, but, you know, Fires obviously we've integrated with and um, yeah, we're looking forward to that and we're launching crypto soon. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah. Thank you, cool. guys. Thank you, Raghu. Thank you, Harsh. Looking Thank forward you. to trying out the product. Awesome. Okay. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye.